welcome to another episode of the Moment of Kiki, coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home Kiki bar here in Central Texas. Not that long ago, I acquired this cool red fish float from an estate sale. Actually, the same estate sale that I got my harpoon from. And as I'm sure you would expect, I plan to turn this into a fish float light. Drill it out, add a light, hang it up, and be done with it. But then, one day, I was flipping through this folder I have, which is a collection of all manner of kiki lights that I found online. And in here, I happen to have old Oceanic Arts light catalogs. In there, I found a cool looking light. It's fairly simple. It uses a glass fish float. And it's got two hoops concentric, so it forms a cone. And there are slats of rattan around the edge. I thought this looked pretty cool. And as I have a number of traditional fish float lights already hanging in my kiki space, first world problems, am I right? Uh, I thought I would like to stretch my legs a bit and see if I could make this uh, light that is based on the original Oceanic Arts design, which I don't think I've ever actually seen anywhere in person in all the kiki bars I've gone to. So it'd be a fun challenge and I invite you to come along with me and see how it works out. Here I have my bamboo and a jig that I have set, this V-shaped jig, I've used it before, to help guide the cuts on my table saw so they go straight. A lot of people uh, will use a machete or a knife just to split the bamboo. I have a difficult time keeping the cut straight. It always wants to veer off and slice off to the side, so I use this jig. <clears throat> I only have the saw raised up enough to do half a cut through there. I found that works better for me so I could do half a cut, flip it over, do another cut rather than trying to do the entire thing at once. And so I have my torched bamboo right here and I'm going to cut the slats. So, now that I have cut my bamboo in half, I need to further cut it into 22 inch sections to form the light that I'm using. Um, the way I'm going to segment this into lengths like this is use my miter saw and at every 22 inch increment I'm going to wrap it with blue tape so we don't get any splintering so we have a smooth cut and it looks attractive when I'm finished. I am going to glue the bamboo hoop together for maximum strength using tight bond wood glue. Just run it along the edge And with the glue all on the edge, reinsert it into the outer hoop and use the thread up here, tighten it up so it holds it secure as the glue dries. And in a few hours, it'll be ready to go. Now I need to drill out 
the bamboo so I can wire it onto the hoops that are forming my lamp. Uh, you'll see that I torched the inside of these bamboo slats after I split it, uh, which I normally don't do because I usually don't split it and I don't need, but I wanted the inside to be darker so that it would not detract or catch the eye. The light inside of the bamboo wouldn't catch the eye when it's hanging from the lamp. Now, <clears throat> I measured out. I'm going to drill the holes one and a half inches from the top. And the bottom hoop, the larger of the hoop, is going to be 16 inches from the top. Now, the reason I didn't measure from the bottom is that these aren't all the exact same length. There is some variation, so I didn't want that variation uh, causing the bottom hoop to be uneven. the drill, put it right here, and I'm drilling two holes right adjacent to each other for the jewelry wire to go through. Simple enough, and two more on the bottom end. There we go. And I used the tape on here just for marking purposes, it's not necessary for anything else. Uh, the pin that I'm using just shows up better on the tape than it would on the bamboo itself. Now I do that seven more times and we're in business. With my bamboo slats all drilled out over here, now I need to start drilling out the bamboo hoops for the wire to go through. And as I'm having eight slats, I need eight pairs of holes equidistant around the hoop. One, now I'm going across to the opposite side and drilling two more right in the middle. I do that all the way around until I have eight pairs of holes crisscrossing the entire hoop. I have wired uh, the tops of these four onto the smaller hoop on upper hoop. Now I need to wire these lower ones into the wider bottom. To do that, I'm taking jeweler's wire, cutting sections of approximately three inches in length. Folding it in two, so it will go in straight and sliding it through the holes that I drilled in the bamboo staves. Now, sliding into the holes I've done in the hoop. There we go. Now, twist the wire to hold it into position. Don't have to go too tight at this point. Now repeat with the other four. There we have it. Now here is my float, which is going to be in the center. And so let's just see how this is gonna shake out. Oh yeah. 
gonna float right in the center right there I think that's gonna look pretty cool now I need to add the other four staves of bamboo and we'll be halfway home What we have now is I've got to finish out this. And so what I'm going to do is take the sisal twine, tie it down here, just regular square knot, and with that in place, I am going to start wrapping, which I've done many times before. So what I'm going to do is take the sisal and I'm going to go around and around and around and around so you can see. <clears throat> and I'm going to completely cover the bamboo embroidery hoop. And I'm going to go all the way around here on the bottom. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go all the way around on the top so that nobody will be able to actually see the embroidery hoop because it will be completely covered by the sisal twine. Okay, I have the hoop wrapped with the sisal twine, and now I need to tie crisscross over these bamboo staves. This will function, as, it'll have two functions. One is aesthetic, it'll just look better, it'll look good having that tied on here. But secondly, it'll also have a functional role. The tie on here will secure it and hold it tight. The wire is strong, but not that strong. So this will just reinforce that and secure it and stabilize. these slats onto the side. So. There we go primitive tied on there and it's holding it fast and secure. With the bottom wrapped with the sisal twine, I got one more step I want to do to tidy it up and that's apply some flame. The sisal twine has a whole lot of fibers, little hairs sticking off. What burning it will do is clean those off. It'll singe those off without burning the twine itself and it'll also impart a, a little scorching effect to it, give it that aged look which is so appealing in Tiki builds. Uh, it's just a quick and effective way of attaining an aged look while also cleaning up the entire uh, uh, rope tie structure. So now we are going to drill a hole in the glass float. I've got the towel 
wrapped up right here to form a base. I have my bottle of water with a hole in the side, which is going to drain onto the float as I cut it to lubricate and cool it. And I have my drill with the um, diamond glass hole saw on the end. To get a more detailed explanation on this, uh, I would recommend you checking out my how to make a glass fish float video that I did originally. Uh, it just goes into more detail, but suffice to say, <clears throat> now I don't use the, uh, the wooden template with the hole in it to guide my saw, uh, the, the hole saw. What I have, I've become proficient at going in at an angle to cut a groove and then once I have that groove established that will anchor the bit, I just move slowly into a vertical position and go straight in. But again, with this, you want to have uh, cut protective gloves, you want to have eye protection, and you want to keep this lubricated the whole time. You can feel when you're getting very close, so you want to ease up on the pressure even more and slow down the cut rate on the bit. So when I was drilling out the glass float, a lot of you were probably thinking, wait a minute, that's a clear ball over there. When we obviously saw him start off with a red fish float, what gives? What kind of bait and switch is this? because a glass fish float, even when it's fully knotted, isn't nearly as interesting as a colored float, and that is true. But I'm going to show you here how we can upscale this glass float and make it a lot cooler than a simple clear globe. And the trick to doing that is frosted glass paint. This is from Rust Oleum. It can be found in hobby shops, uh, you know, big box stores. It's a really common thing. And what it does is apply a translucent coating to the glass. So light will pass through, but light will be diffused. And so you can do really cool things with that. And it will turn a boring clear glass orb, whether it's a fish float, a knockoff fish float, or you know, even just a garden globe that you're repurposing into something really cool. So just follow the instructions. You're gonna shake it up and then apply a minimum of two coats. You want it to be as evenly dispersed and completely covering the glass as possible. You don't want any gaps in the coating. Now the paint is not opaque. It's gonna go on and it's gonna look like it's just getting the glass wet. Never fear. It will slowly become more and more translucent as it dries. So put on one coat, step away, 
allow it to dry completely, then come back and see where you need to touch it up and put on another coat. And just continue that until you are satisfied that your clear glass sphere has been completely enveloped in the frosted glass paint. Okay, doesn't this look so much nicer? Um, it's got that translucent, milky white appearance rather than just crystal clear. And this is going to be so much better once we get the whole rope tie finished. Now, I'm going to tie the net that will go around this. I have a piece of quarter inch sisal rope. This is 100 feet. I'm not going to use anywhere near 100 feet for this. I'm just going to use as much as I can and cut it off and save the rest for later. We're going to start off with a circle. Make the simple loop, then bring the rope in and out, in and out, just wrapping around all the way until we get to the end. It comes back in on itself. At this point, I'm going to make take the long end, then loop it over. So it hooks in there, then bring this out and do the same thing again. Make another loop, the same size, pull the rope up over and then loop over that. We're making a loop and a loop and a loop and it's all holding everything together. And these are going to be fairly tightly wound, not a lot of play. Okay, now we have the compass rose and the glass ball fits in perfectly. It's got the space for the nipple thing here at the bottom and that will hold it secure. And we've got, okay, let's put this aside and Take a loop, stick it up through here. We twist and then this is the tedious part because we pull the entire length of rope all the way through. This isn't a whole lot of fun. It works better if you have shorter lengths of rope. Shorter doesn't always get it done. And I don't wanna cut this 100 feet of rope because I want to use it for other things and I fear that I might cut it too short. So once you get the kinks worked out of the rope, literally it goes a lot faster see what i mean and now pull this knot tight want to leave as little slack in the knots as possible and continue all the way around. I'm going to do complete this loop on the outside then I'm going to start another one until we have enough netting to enclose the globe. And here we are. We have the net finished. It's got three layers deep, went around three times, which is just the right amount to reach up almost to the top 
of my glass float right here. Now, I want to, before I forget, uh, give a shout out to that Jack Knotts online. That's where I learned a, uh, they've got a really good tutorial there uh, with pictures that I initially referenced way back when, and it taught me how to do the knotting. It was very helpful. So you can go check them out because my instructions right here probably aren't nearly as clear. But at this point, we have enough net. Now we have to tie it off at the top. So what we're going to do is go from this end and we're going to cross over and we're going to stitch back and forth in a star pattern right here, then go to the next one then go to the next one to the next one. And so it's kind of kind of rotate around one over each time. We're always crossing over to the opposite side. Now, because this is a smaller net for a smaller sphere, uh, I think that's a little aggressive. You're going to get too much rope at the top. So what I'm going to do is cross over, but instead of just going straight back over, I'm going to loop in on one hitch and then go out through another. So it's going to reduce the number of crossover on the top of the sphere by about 50%. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I've tried it both ways and for the smaller spheres, it just seems to work better for me. So put this right here and I have 13 hoops at the end. So it's an odd number. So I'm going to count over one, two, three, four, five, six. And straight across there and pull it back through the other one. You can see here, we're getting a crisscross kind of star pattern over the top. And each time we loop it over, you want to make sure to pull it really tight. You don't want any slack, otherwise your netting and float will start sagging in the future. Okay. Now that we have the net encompassing the sphere, the ball, the float, <coughs> we're going to tie the loop that it hangs from. So take you into your rope and then you go back underneath all those crisscross crosshatch ties that we just spent several minutes pulling really, really tight. Okay, so I like the ties to be about the same depth as the float that they're hanging. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to loop it under again. So I have a double rope loop here. You can go three, I guess you could go just one, but I like to do two. That's me. Okay, and here we go, get these pulled through so they are very close to the same length. Now for the final step, we're going to take 
rope and loop it around several times. Not too tightly yet. In fact, for this you want it to be fairly loose. We'll see in a moment. Find your end, and we're going to tuck the end piece through the middle of this loop that we've been, this coil that we have wrapped around the hanging loop. And we're going to pull it through. There's a lot of pulling through. Now, we're going to pull it tight, so all of these coils are going to tighten up and knot this into one solid, stable rope piece here. Excellent. And there we have it. The fish float. Knotted and tied. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you see, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. If you really like what you've been seeing here on A Moment of Tiki, please uh, leave a comment or maybe even share the video to your feeds. Uh, what this does is make it easier for others to find a moment of tiki. And if you do that, I will be grateful. Mahalo. I have to make the light socket for the light now. Before, when I made my initial glass fish floats, I salvaged some sockets out of a broken lamp. Uh, this time I don't have a broken lamp handy, so I actually went and bought some candelabra sockets. Uh, they're available through most of your big box retailers like Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, you can order them online even cheaper. There's the shorter version. Uh, I like to use this one for smaller floats and a longer version, which I like to use for the larger diameter floats, gets the light closer into the center. So what I'm going to do with these is attach them to these corks, which I use to plug the hole that I just drilled into the glass floats. Now I'm using a drill bit uh, with a fairly large diameter to go through these so we have a hole to run the electrical wire in. Center it as best I can. And there we go. Now the cork is very spongy and so this is going to want to ride around and, and poke around on you. We have this metal ring at the end with a hole in the center for the wire to go through to connect with the leads on either side of the socket itself. So how I am going to connect the sockets permanently onto the corks is to use some epoxy. Use whatever type you prefer. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just something that will adhere to metal. This cork is wood and it will, it's fairly porous and so it'll be agreeably attached to anything. Put two globs of epoxy together, the epoxy and the activator. 
and stir them well until you get a uniform gray. That's just about perfect. Now I'm getting a glob on here and applying it to the metal ring on the end of the light socket, the candelabra socket. Be generous, don't overdo it, but then again, you can wipe away whatever you don't need. Take the cork, the tapered end, and attach it, press it down. Want it centered as much as possible. And voila, there we have it. At this point, I need to wire my sockets. Taking off the uh, cardboard sleeve, I went and painted these black with acrylic just to make them less obtrusive when they're in place. I also stained the cork uh, brown just to, again, darken it so it would not be as obtrusive. I have lamp wire. I'm going to thread the wire through the cork. Okay, now that these are through sufficiently, I'm not going to connect them immediately to the terminals. What I'm going to do is tie these separate strands into what's known as an underwriter's knot. It's a knot so you never have strain on the terminals. The knot will uh, secure the wires here in place. And the way you do that, it's just loop one, have it going down, and then loop the other, and it goes through the loop. So it's you know, kind of a bow. And they pull tight, and you're good to go. Now, if you have any strain on the wire, the strain will be put on the knot and not on the terminals. For the terminals, I'm going to attach the neutral first, the way you can tell neutral wire, oftentimes it'll be a different color, it'll be white. But if it's not white, if it's on a single strand, single monocolor strand like this black lamp wire, you can feel there is a set of grooved ridges on one of the wires. That denotes neutral. So you find that one. So this is going to go on to the silver terminal. The silver terminal, the silver color denotes neutral. Wrap it around the terminal and tighten the screw down onto the wire to secure it firmly to the terminal. Now we repeat with the positive wire. The positive wire is identified by having no ridges. The exterior of the insulation is smooth and it's going to go onto the gold terminal. Then I tighten it down to secure the wire in place. So we have an active current going through the socket. And finally, I take the non-conductive cardboard sleeve and slide it back over the top to cover up the terminals and we're good to go into our fish float lamps and illuminate them from within. Now to hang the light from the ceiling, I'm going to use a chain setup using base lamp chain right here. I've already attached these two. There are eight slats, there's eight gaps, and so I'm going to add two more on each side so it'll be self-leveling. I have taken my pliers and wrapped black vinyl electrical tape around the edges so they will not mar the chain finish and just bend apart enough so the chain will separate and I can slide it over the bamboo hoop. 
That works well. And now I take the pliers and push the chain back together. Okay, right now that is solid on there. I'm going to do the same thing with this link so I can attach it to the top. Fortunately, the top link isn't as wide as the bamboo, so it doesn't take as much. Very good. And now the last step is to attach the glass float into the basket frame. This is pretty cool because we are almost finished and ready for installation. And we're doing this the exact same way as we did previously. I am taking the pliers, I'm going to pull open the chain just enough to get a link through. That's not quite enough. Now, this and attach it here. Use the pliers to pinch that link shut again. Oh, that's just about perfect. So now we have. It's good. Yeah, this is it. I have the float suspended in the middle of the bamboo. That looks pretty. I like it. Can't wait to see it installed, which we will be doing next. Now you haven't seen yet what frosting the glass does. Instead of just clear, I have flat. Now this is the bulb right here with a red bulb in it, C7 LED. Put it inside and the frosting has a diffused glow to it, but I'm not going to put a red bulb in there. No. What I am doing is going to put this, a color changing LED. Put it in here. Now I have a multicolored glass fish float. It's going to look so cool. And here we are at the end of another project. Uh, I'm pretty jazzed about the way this turned out. I've got the large full size glass fish float lamp here made uh, it's, you know a little over two feet deep it's got the bright red fish float in the middle bamboo staves around the edges it looks very much like the original oceanic arts lamp design and i've also as a bonus got the smaller one to go in my interior tiki space where there's a lot less headroom uh, they both turned out fantastic. I'm really happy with it. And this is a great option if you have fish floats and you simply want to jazz them up and bring a little something extra to the party. All I have to do now is hang them up and we're done. And here we are, the finished lamp installed and ready to go, adding additional tiki ambiance to my Lagoon Mystery Home Tiki Bar. 
you know, it was a lot of work, but I think it paid off. I'm looking and it is a worthy rip on Oceanic Arts original design. I'm really happy with it, really happy with the one that I have inside as well. You know, this is how you learn to build upon your skill set. You know, last year I drilled out the fish floats and made lights, and this here is taking it another step, uh, building upon that skill set, making each iteration uh, a little bit more complex, a little more interesting, a little more engaging. I'm really thrilled with this. Uh, I already have some ideas for the next types of key lights that I'm going to make building on what I have learned before. But for now, I'm just happy having this one here lighting up the Lagoon of Mystery and adding to that immersive experience. So until next time, aloha. If you ever feel lonely and you haven't got a friend If you feel down hearted and that's your old sin And you get yourself together and head for a place I know It's a little German town with a Spanish name And once you go there you never be the same And it's a whole lot cleaner and safer than Mexico Well it's 90 miles from Houston 120 from San Antonio And once you hit the city limits You don't have to be alone Every tavern and salesman that's on the road Every trucker that's scared and overload Knows a boom in a little If you got a little money and you feel up tight, go to the Grange and they'll treat you right. Just stop at the filling station, give them half a chance. And they'll give you directions to a little retreat with the great air government inspected meat. And they'll send you to the famous chicken ranch. Well, it's 90 miles from Houston, 120 from San Antonio. And once you hit the city limits, you don't have to be alone. Every tavern salesman that's on the road, every trucker that's scared. Every traveling salesman that's on the road, every trucker that's scared and overloads knows a booming.
Funny, that was a little country place out there. The people tried to make it into something that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Just a little country horse, what it amounted to. Yeah.